JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's daily market review for May the 18th. I am Haralamos Pissuros, Head of Research here at JFT. Now we'll talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded lower against all the major currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It lost the most ground against GBP, the euro and CHF in that order, while it lost the least versus the Canadian dollar. Now in our view, the weakening of the US dollar suggests that market sentiment remained supported yesterday and today in Asia. And indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that um, major European and US indices were a sea of green though sentiment softened again uh, during the Asian trading today. Now European shares may have taken the torch from the Asian, from the Asian ones which traded in the green on Tuesday. Uh, remember yesterday we noted that there was no clear catalyst for that, for the improvement in sentiment during the Asian session on Wednesday. But from what uh, we understand now, this may have been due to China achieving three days in a row without new coronavirus cases outside uh, quarantine zones, something that may have raised speculation that restrictions may start to be removed soon. Appetite improved even more during the US trading and the extra fuel may have come from, uh, from the US uh, retail sales data. Headline sales slowed to 0.9% month over month from an upwardly revised 1.4%, while the core rate slid to 0.6% month over month from another upwardly revised 2.1%. The headline rate matched its own consensus, while the core one was higher. Now, it seems that the higher core rate and the, up and the upside revisions for the month of March may have erased some concerns with regards to the performance of the US economy, and that's why Wall Street extended its latest recovery. However, our own view is that uh, better economic data uh, from the US are likely to spark fresh speculation for a faster tightening by the Fed. Yesterday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said, what we need to see is inflation coming down in a clear and convincing way, and we are going to keep pushing until we see that. He added, if we don't see that, we will have to consider moving more aggressively. So, reading between the lines, this means that they are not planning to deliver 75 basis points uh, hikes at the moment, but they don't rule that out if needed. If he was considering that now, he would have said, if we, he wouldn't have said, if we don't see that. So, it seems that for now, he sticks to his guns for f uh, of 50 basis points increases for the next couple of meetings. Market participants appear to agree with uh, our view as well, because according to the CME Fed Watch tool, the probability for a double hike at next month's gathering remains at 90%. Now, in any case, our point is that Powell is not totally dismissing the chance for uh, 75 basis points hikes in a few months if inflation does not come down. So with that in mind, we cannot confidently say that the latest recovery in equities is the start of a bullish reversal. After all, from a technical point of view, all uh, three of Wall Street main indices remain below downside resistance lines. Thus, for now, we will consider the current recovery as a corrective move. Now, despite some speculation that China could start lifting COVID-related uh, restrictions soon, and despite the decent US retail sales data, concerns, concerns over the performance of the global economy are still there, which combined with the element of uncertainty surrounding the war in Ukraine could keep uh, that recovery uh, limited and short-lived. Uh, 
Now as uh, for today's event, during the early European session we already got the UK CPIs for April with the headline rate jumping to 9% year over year from 7%. Now our view this adds credence to the view that the Bank of England is likely to continue raising interest rates but the concerns over a recession of the UK economy next year are likely to keep the path slow. Later in the day we get more CPI data for April, this time from Canada. The headline rate is forecast to have held steady at 6.7% year over year, while the core one is anticipated to have declined to 4.2% uh, from 5.5%. At its latest gathering, the Bank of Canada decided to hike rates by 50 basis points as was expected, noting that interest rates will need to rise further. Governor Macklem specifically said we need higher rates and the economy can handle them, adding that they are prepared to move as forcefully as needed to get inflation on target. So, with uh, despite the 50 basis points hike being priced in, Macklem appeared even more hoggish than expected and this hoggish outcome supported the loony uh, back then. However, a decent slowdown in underlying inflation may be an indication that this bank, although within the hoggish group of the majors, may not need to hike as fast as initially estimated, or at least not as fast as the Fed. Something like that could result in another upside wave in uh, the USD cut currency pair. Now tonight, during the Asian session Thursday, Australia releases uh, its employment report for April. The employment rate is forecast to have uh, ticked down to 3.9% from 4%, while the net change in employment is forecast to show that the economy has added 30,000 jobs after gaining 17.9 thousands in March. Overall, these numbers point to a decent report and may support somewhat the Aussie, especially after the minutes of the latest RBA gathering uh, added some credence to market expectations around the RBA's uh, future course of action. However, as we already noted, we stick to our guns that the Oz is likely to stay in a downtrend mode due to, risk, to its uh, risk-linked uh, status and its close uh, uh, and Australia's trade close relationship uh, with uh, China. Uh, the currency is feeling the heat of global co growth concerns more than uh, monetary policy expectations. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.